<laughs> have you ever just looked at the Great Pyramid and thought, wow, like, how did they actually do that? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's obviously an incredible feat of engineering. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's been standing there for thousands of years. Yeah, thousands. But, you, you know, today we're going to go way beyond, like, what you might read in just a regular history book. Okay, yeah. We're diving into some cutting edge research mm -hmm. that uses this amazing technology to like see inside the pyramid in a whole new way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. So we've got some excerpts here from uh, from this study mm -hmm. called Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler. Tomography unveils high resolution internal structures of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Wow, that's a mouthful. Right. Yeah. And uh, and this comes from a source that we've got called Texiang de Tempelkin. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. So so what they've done is they've actually used satellite data, this SAR Doppler tomography, to like build these incredible three D images of what's inside. Mm. So that's what we're going to dig into today. What we're going to try to do is make sure you understand, like, what are the key findings here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is this technology telling us yeah. about how this thing might have been built and maybe even some of its functions beyond just being a tomb? Mm -hmm. So think of this as your, like, crash course in yeah. understanding some really, really cool Tunes new research. Absolutely. So, okay. So how do you even begin to use a satellite to see inside something as massive as the Great Pyramid? Right. That's just solid rock. Yeah, so you're right. It is a challenge. And regular synthetic aperture radar, uh, which, you know, is SAR, which is mm -hmm. often used for mapping the Earth, you know, has a hard time penetrating really dense material like granite. Right. But what they do here in this study is they use a much more kind of subtle approach. Okay. They use SAR Doppler tomography. Mm -hmm. And this is really fascinating because they're basically using the pyramid's own very, very faint vibrations to create these images. So they're analyzing these like incredibly tiny movements on the surface of the pyramid that are caused by background seismic activity, you know, just the Earth's natural tremors, wind, even distant city sounds, things like that. Wow. So they're picking up like movements from space yeah. that are like... It's incredible. Indescule. It's amazing what technology can do these days. Yeah. The Cosmos SkyMed satellite system they use is so sensitive, it can detect these minute vibrations mm -hmm. by looking at the Doppler effect, which is how the frequency of a signal changes as the receiver moves relative to the source. Okay. So as the satellite moves, it's looking at these changes, and by analyzing those changes, they can then reconstruct an image of what's inside without actually having to, like, you know, drill into it or anything. That's amazing. So it's kind of like... You know, you think about like a musical instrument, yeah, right? Okay. If, if you like hit a bell or something, mm -hmm. it vibrates in a certain way. Yeah. Different parts vibrate in their own way. Right. And that creates the sound that you hear. Right. And so they're kind of... It's the same concept here. They're yeah, picking up on those vibrations. With the pyramid. Absolutely. And the really crucial part here is that this method actually gets around the granite issue. Oh, okay. Because they're not trying to send a signal through it. Right. They're just listening to what's already happening. Gotcha. So they're using what's already there. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So what do they see? I mean, obviously they, they must have seen like what we already know about the pyramid, right? Like the king's chamber. Yeah. So they did see the known structures and that's a good thing right. because it kind of confirms that their method is accurate. Right. Right. So they clearly detected things like the king's chamber uh -huh. and that actually had a particularly strong signal, which they think is because of its size and because it's made of granite. So it's kind of amplifying those vibrations. Right. They also saw the queen's chamber in its expected location, you know, relative to the king's chamber and the apex of the pyramid. Uh -huh. And of course, the grand gallery, that impressive ascending passage was also clearly imaged. Okay, so they saw... And they even saw the unfinished room, you know, the one down below. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the existing map is confirmed, but I'm guessing the really cool stuff is like... Oh, yeah. New discoveries. Absolutely. The really interesting stuff is what they found that we didn't know about before. Okay. And one of the biggest surprises actually wasn't even inside the pyramid. It was on the outside. Oh, really? Yeah. So using a related technique called SAR interferometry, which looks at tiny changes in the surface of the pyramid over time, Okay. They found evidence that the pyramids on the Giza Plateau, Num, Khufu, Kefrin, and Menkar, mm -hmm. actually have an eight-sided facade. Eight sides. Not the four-sided structure that we usually think of. I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's not something you hear every day. How could they have missed that for so long? Well, the thing is, the curves on each of the four faces are very, very slight. 
But this SAR interferometry is so precise that it can pick up on these tiny changes, and by measuring these changes over time, they were able to detect this eight-sided shape. Huh. And this is where it gets really interesting because yeah. the study suggests that this might have been intentional for managing water. Water. Yeah, they proposed that the pyramids might have once been surrounded by these water basins, and this eight-sided shape could have helped control the water flow along the exterior, you know, <laughs> directing it where they wanted it to go. Almost like they engineered it to deal with, like, the flooding of the Nile or something. Exactly, but... yeah. Maybe seasonal flooding or just directing water to specific areas around the base. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it really changes how you picture the whole complex, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not just these things sitting out in the desert. Right. Okay, so moving inside now. Yeah. Let's talk about the internal discoveries. Okay. Did they find anything new? Oh, they found a bunch of new stuff. Okay. One of the most significant was the discovery of two inclined ramps. Yeah, one on the eastern side and one on the western side. Right. And these ramps seem to start at the northern ground level and go up to about halfway up the pyramid on the southern side. So like internal ramps inside the pyramid. Yeah, inside the pyramid. Huh, that's interesting because, you know, when you think about how they must have moved those huge blocks. Oh, yeah. That makes a lot more sense than trying to like yeah. haul them up some external ramp. Absolutely. And the study emphasizes how steep these ramps are. Okay. Which really supports the idea that they were used to move those massive granite blocks during construction. Right. You can almost imagine, you know, teams of people hauling these multi-ton stones up these internal pathways. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense than like these external ramps that people have talked about before. Yeah, it offers a much more plausible explanation for how they built these colossal structures. Yeah, so these ramps just stop halfway up the pyramid. Well, not exactly. The study also describes this horizontal corridor that's located high up on the southern side. And what's interesting is that this corridor seems to connect the upper ends of those two inclined ramps. Huh. So it raises the question, what was its purpose? Right. Was it a staging area for moving the blocks further up? Yeah. Did it play some kind of structural role, you know, linking the two ramps? Right. Or maybe it even had a ceremonial function, you know, at that height within the pyramid. A high altitude hallway inside the Great Pyramid. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to think about. Okay, so what else did they see? Well, they also identified two descending ramps. Oh, wow. These run parallel to the eastern and western sides of the base, and they go downwards underground. Underground. Yeah. And here's another interesting detail. Right. These descending ramps lead into a northern underground corridor, which branches off into two additional sections. So it's like a whole underground complex? Yeah, like secret levels or something. Right. And is this unique to the Great Pyramid, or have they seen this in other pyramids? Well, that's what's really interesting. The study points out that this layout is actually similar to underground structures found in other early Egyptian pyramids. Oh, wow. Like the ones at Zayat el Arian and Sekhemket. Okay. So this suggests that this kind of underground arrangement wasn't just a one-off thing. Right. It might have been a common design element, maybe with logistical purposes like storage okay. or even symbolic functions that we haven't figured out yet. Wow. So it's like they had this master plan that they were using? Yeah, possibly. Okay, so keep going. What else did they find? Okay, so right underneath the northern base of the pyramid, uh, they found this complex structure. Another structure. Yeah, it's got a main horizontal section with several perpendicular extensions. So like extensions sticking out at right angles. Yeah, exactly. What would that be for? Okay, so this is where it gets really cool. Okay. The researchers think that this structure might have been designed to absorb mechanical vibrations. Vibration? Yeah, like a built-in shock absorber. They compare it to similar features that are used in modern engineering to stabilize buildings against things like earthquakes. So they were thinking about that thousands of years ago. It seems like it. That's incredible. It's amazing, isn't it? And yeah. they also noted a small central vertical shaft within this base structure, uh -huh. which again echoes architectural elements found at other ancient Egyptian sites. Interesting. Yeah. So we've got ramps, we've got corridors. We've got underground complexes. We've got a shock absorber. And we've got one more big discovery. Okay, lay it on me. A large empty space above the Grand Gallery. Wait, I think I've heard about this. Yeah, you might have. Didn't they find that using like muon particles or something? Yeah, there was some previous research using muons okay. that suggested there might be a void in that area, but the details were pretty vague. Okay. This SAR Doppler tomography gives us a much clearer picture. Okay. It shows the shape, the size, and most importantly, how it connects to other internal structures. So it's not just like an empty space. 
No, it's connected through these slanted or oblique corridors. Wow. So it seems to be integrated into the pyramid's internal network. So we've got like a giant box-shaped void. Yeah, a parallel pipe. Above the Grand Gallery, connected by slanted corridors. Yeah, pretty much. This is like some Indiana Jones stuff. Right. Okay, so looking at all of this, what's the big takeaway here? Well, for one thing, it really supports those theories about the internal ramps being used to lift the blocks. Okay. It just makes so much more sense than these massive external ramps that would have been almost as big as the pyramid itself. Right. And then when you consider this network of chambers and corridors, especially when you think about that eight-sided exterior and the potential for water management hmm. and that vibration-absorbing base, right. it really suggests that this pyramid was more than just a tomb. Right. Maybe there were hydraulic systems. Okay. Maybe chambers that were designed to resonate with specific frequencies. Or like sound. Yeah, like sound. Or maybe to interact with like vibrational energy or something. Exactly. It's all starting to sound pretty interconnected. Right. So maybe those eight sides on the outside were for directing water flow. And then that water was being used in some way inside the pyramid. Yeah, possibly. And then you've got this vibration dampener at the base. Right. What about that basin in the king's chamber and that niche in the queen's chamber? Yeah, the study actually looks at those features in a new light. Okay. You know, that granite basin in the king's chamber and the niche in the queen's chamber, possibly, along with this cylindrical container that might have fit in the niche, uh -huh. could have functioned as Helmholtz resonators. What are those? They're basically these enclosed spaces that can amplify specific low-frequency sounds. So they're like built-in amplifiers. Yeah, kind of like that. So the whole pyramid was built to interact with water and maybe even produce sound. That's a pretty mind-blowing concept, yeah, right? It's definitely not just a tomb anymore. Yeah, the researchers really emphasize that these findings challenge the traditional understanding of the Great Pyramid. It suggests a much more complex purpose, maybe technological, maybe ceremonial. Wow. And it really highlights the power of this new technology, the SAR Doppler tomography. Yeah. And it's non-destructive. Right. And it's giving us this incredibly detailed view of the pyramid's interior. So for everyone listening out there. Yeah. You've just gone through this amazing deep dive. That's right. Into this research. Yeah. So what are like the key things to remember? Okay, so the main takeaways are the surprising complexity that we're seeing inside the pyramid thanks to this satellite technology. Okay. We now have evidence for these internal construction ramps, uh, a whole network of new corridors and chambers, right. and these potential features that suggest hydraulic and acoustic functions. Right. And all of this points to a much bigger purpose for the Great Pyramid than just being a tomb. It's like we've only just begun to understand this structure. Exactly. So here's something to think about. Okay. Given everything we've just talked about, <laughs> what do you think the real purpose of this ancient wonder might have been? Mm. What other secrets could still be hidden inside? Yeah. It makes you think, doesn't it? It really does. Till next time. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye.